Hey YouTubers, today we have a Mila dishwasher that's misbehaving. Uh, it is filling, but then it stops and then fills and then stops back and forth over and over and it doesn't really get started. So it's having trouble filling and this is due to a part called the uh, flow meter and it's like a little wheel that spins as the water enters the machine and it tells the computer or the controller how much water is coming in. But if the wheel that spins, the little paddle gets stuck, or if the wire that connects to it has a corroded connection, um, it won't send a good signal. And then the controller gets mixed up. It doesn't know whether to keep the uh, fill valve open or to close it. So it starts and stops, starts and stops. And usually the cycle never even begins. The symptoms are pretty classic starts filling, stops, starts filling, stops. And today we're gonna learn how to fix it. It's pretty easy. Uh, we're gonna learn how to um, fix the little thing called the flow meter connection and maybe even replace it if necessary. We'll put a link in the description below. So let's get started. Um, before we begin, my name is Scott, the Fix-It Guy, and I've got over 30 years of experience working on the Mila machines. And we'll be able to get this fixed for you uh, really quickly. Before we start, could you take just a second to subscribe and press the little bell notification button and that'll allow me to send you new Mila uh, repair videos each week because we, we make a new one each week. So please stick around till the end because we have some really cool bonus material on how to do some really quick and easy repairs on the Mila dishwasher for very common problems that this kind of machine runs into. So please hang out to the end and let's get right into the video. And we got to get this out of the cabinet. This one, luckily, I've been working on already. Doing some repairs is out, so it's easy to access. But to get it out of the cabinet, you usually just have to remove a few screws. And Mila dishwashers have a long uh, fill line and also a long drain line and a long power cord. So often, you can just get them out of the cabinet by removing the screws, and you can pull out the whole machine without having to do a lot of disconnecting. So you do want to unplug it, It'd be wise to turn off the water supply coming to the dishwasher underneath the sink is usually where you would find that. And to remove it from the cabinet, um, you should find if you open up the door that there's a couple of spots on the side. There might be little plastic plugs in the way you could pry them off. And then there'll be usually Phillips head screws. Sometimes they're Torx 15 screws that you remove. And then after you get those screws out of the wood from the sides, you'll be able to wiggle the machine out. I usually open up the door and pull a little bit on the door. And then once I get it out far enough, I grab the frame and, and wiggle it out. So that's usually all it takes. Sometimes there's a few Phillips head screws that are going up into the cabinet that you may have to remove. So once you get out the screws you think are holding it in, if you start to pull and it's still resisting, there's probably a couple of extra screws. So the screw locations usually are here sometimes down here and over on the side and then sometimes up here and up here occasionally the Mila dishwasher will be in the cabinet just by friction only so down at the bottom if you remove the little kick plate that's here at the bottom you can have access to the two little feet and you can turn them so they turn up into the dishwasher and that lowers the dishwasher a little bit gives you some wiggle room to get it out but once you get it out, all you need to do to get to the flow meter is remove the panel on this side of the dishwasher, and it's really easy to do. We'll cover that next. So now we've got the dishwasher out of the cabinet, and this is the right side. If you're looking at the front of the dishwasher, this would be on your right-hand side, this panel. And it's easy to get this off. We have to remove a few Phillips head screws. So we have one down here in the front when you open the door, pull out that screw. And then we have one here, or I'm sorry, two at the top, one here and one here. And there's one actually on the back down here. So once you get those screws out, this panel will just lift off of the bottom lip and you'll have access to that flow meter. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those screws.
All right, we got all, all those screws came out pretty quick. We're just gonna lift this up now, this panel, get it out of the way. And now we see some interesting parts of the Miele dishwasher. That's that big old spring that controls the tension on the door. It has a cable. This is the pulley for the cable down here. This is where water enters into the machine. And down here is where we have the flow meter. So on different Miele models, sometimes this is found on the other side, but this is on the um, incognito model. And it's the, uh, we call the Miele G8000 series. So you're gonna find it right here. We can see there's a little blue plug connected and you may just have a problem with um, a corroded connection. So we'll try that first. Because the machine is still plugged in to, not power, but it's still hooked up to the drain, it's still hooked up to a water supply. Um, once you do a change to create uh, a better flow meter, you can test it to make sure it works. And if it doesn't work, you can go to the next level. So the easiest thing for us to do first is just to get this connection off and make sure that the uh, connection is not corroded. So we'll do that next. So we got a little bit of a close up here for you to get closer to this flow meter. And here's the wire connection. So if you wanna just get this modular plug off and clean it, you can press in on that, that green tab there at the end with, with a little screwdriver with your finger. You can pull this white thing down. <clears throat> then you can spray some electrical cleaner in there. That would probably be all that's needed and just put it back and then give it a test. If you wanna get this uh, whole circuit board out, you can just press in on this white tab to do that with my thumb. And then the whole thing's gonna come out. Let's see if I can do that and hold the camera at the same time, probably not. <laughs> yeah, there we go, okay. So now this whole thing's coming out and we can see this little gizmo here on the board. And all that thing does is it's uh, magnetic. It's reacting to a wheel that turns. There's a wheel inside here and as the water hits it, it spins that wheel and that wheel will create a magnetic pulse. It'll make this little piece of metal move back and forth inside here and kind of turn this thing on and off, on and off, on and off. And that's gonna send a signal to the computer to know that the water's coming in as it should. But if this gets corrupted because this wheel's not turning anymore, or you have a bad connection here, or this part has just stopped doing its thing, then you can easily fix it. So. We'll go over next how to do those three possibilities. So probably what's happened is that this connection has got a little steam built up, a little corrosion, and it's just not sending a really good signal. So we might wanna just clean this up. You can use some of this stuff we call contact cleaner. You can get this at Home Depot in the electrical section, and you can order it online. We'll put a link in the description below. It's really good for cleaning up electrical stuff it evaporates really fast after it cleans. So what I'll do with this thing, and again, you don't have to take this out. It could still be up in here when you, when you get the wire loose, but I'm just gonna push up on that tab, that green tab. I'm gonna wiggle this white modular connector out. And I wanna clean, I wanna spray some cleaner in there, and I wanna spray some cleaner in there and then I'll hook it up again and just give it a try. So let's do that. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this electrical cleaner on those contacts. And we'll put a little bit of electrical cleaner on these contacts. And that's all you gotta do. Don't worry if you get any cleaner up in here, it's okay. This stuff evaporates really fast. So that should probably do the trick when you put it all back together. Um, if not, it could be that the little wheel here is just jammed. And using a strong magnet, you can get the thing moving. Or this part, which is pretty cheap, you can get it from Mila USA flow meter. 
um, you can just get a new one and just pop it in. As you can see, the, the checking it and uh, cleaning it and reinstalling it is, is really easy. It just takes a few tools, probably about half an hour of your time. So after you've cleaned it, you're just gonna go ahead and put the modular connector back in is, is all the way so it clicks in. And then you would feed this one back into its housing until it clicks, right? Just, that's it. And then I would go ahead and plug it in, turn the water supply back on and give it a try. And if it's still having trouble, then I would contact Mila USA and ask them to send you that new circuit board, the flow meter, and you just pop a new one in. So I'm gonna see if I can find a large magnet so we can see if we can get the wheel to move to show you guys. So you do have a wheel right back here. It's hard to see, I'm sorry you guys, but there is a paddle. I can see the line of it right there. And if you take a powerful magnet, there's another paddle right here. And you get it around here and you just turn it, that wheel will respond, it should turn. If it's not turning, then the wheel stuck. So if, the, if this machine has been sitting for a long time without any water in it, sometimes the seal can dry out, it kind of gets stuck. And the only way you can get that thing moving is to have a very powerful magnet. Um, I'm just trying to think what kind you could get. Like a, a really good earth, they call it powerful earth magnet. And get it in there and just spin turn turn around turn around turn around sometimes you can free it up and get it moving once it's moving then you're okay but usually in my experience the wheel does move and the problem is a loose wire connection that we saw before with this guy or it's corroded it just needs to be cleaned and then sometimes this part is just burned burned out and no longer does its job so First thing I would try is just cleaning and redoing that connection. Next thing I would go to is replacement of that piece. And lastly, which is very rare, that wheel gets stuck. And then you're just gonna need a powerful earth magnet to turn it. So next thing we're just gonna test it, make sure it's working. And once it's functioning, you don't have the F12 anymore. You don't have the intake drain error. And the water comes in somewhat consistently. It is normal for it to have some pulsing in the very beginning. It starts, stops, starts, stops, usually about three times. And then you can hear it coming in nice and consistently. So if you get to that point, you know you're okay, you know you fixed it, let's just put it back together. And all we need to do is just put that panel back on and then get it back into the cabinet. So that side panel, it has, lip right there you can kind of see that lip and that is going to rest right on this part of the frame so we're going to put that back on and we'll go ahead and put it in position and then add those screws back in and lift it a little bit move it up over and i'll put those phillips head screws in the top By the way, when you look at those screws that you took out, the ones that go in the top and the one that goes in the back are these golden ones, kind of an aggressive thread pattern. And then the one that goes in the front is more what we call a machine screw. It's a Phillips head here, but the threads are finer and it has like a little pin right here. All right, we've got those screws back in. We've got the panel back in position. Let's go over some of this bonus material. This is some things you could do if this Mila dishwasher acts up. Sometimes if they sit for a while, when you go to start them, they fill, we fix the fill problem. But then when it's supposed to circulate after the fill, um, there is a uh, delay and then there's the intake drain light comes on. And that's because the little impeller that spins to circulate the water has become frozen. And this just is a quick way to unfreeze it. Just take you about five minutes. So to do the next part of the repair to unfreeze the pump, we just took a kitchen fork and we just bent back the front two tangs a little bit, tongs a little bit until they broke off. You don't have to do that. You can probably just use a regular medium size 
kitchen fork and this is just going to let us get into where the impeller is so we can turn it manually to free up its binding on the shaft around the motor shaft so let's do that next okay we're just going to open the door we do want to get all the water out that'll make it a lot easier you can just take this bottom basket pull it out put it off to the side and then we do need to remove a couple things super easy though i going to pull up on this lower spray arm, comes right out, that off to the side. We're going to remove the triple filter, that's this thing. Just going to move the arm either that way, sometimes it's you move it this way, but it'll loosen up and then you can take that out. And then you're going to get to the access point for the circulation pump, which is this rectangular slot here. Now, not, not all models have this accessibility. On some models, there's a ridge of plastic here that's in your way, and you can't really use this trick. Uh, unfortunately, there's really no quick way to, to get that thing to move. But on many of the models, including this incognito model, this the G8000, we're just gonna get that fork in there and turn it. Let me grab the fork. You probably don't have to ruin a fork, you could probably just use a regular one, but with the center tang uh, tongs removed, it's a little bit easier to get to the impeller. So I'm just going to go in there, kind of wiggle it in as far as it'll go, and then I'll turn it. It went in pretty far, huh? You take a look at how far that went in, I'd say that's maybe couple of inches right here's where it was look how far it went in pretty good and then I can feel my hand out of the way so you guys can see I can feel that impeller turning I'm gonna rock it back and forth I'm gonna rock it to the left rock it to the right you might be able to even hear that thing let me let me be quiet I hear like a little bit of a rubbing sound. Now this one has been sitting with what they call a dry sump for a while where there's no, been no water in here. And that's not good. These are actually designed, including the Bosch dishwashers, to have water about this high all the time. So even after you drain out all the water, there's still gonna be water in here and that's to keep that seal moist, keep it wet. But if it gets dry, many times the motor doesn't have enough energy to spin and to break the friction of the dried out shaft the dried out seal around the motor shaft. So using this mechanical force, you can get this thing moving. It's going back and forth, back and forth. You can even do a full revolution all the way around. And keep doing that. Then when you try your cycle, you can let it fill. And when you hear that it's about to circulate, you can add in some mineral oil and the mineral oil will act as a lubricant to lubricate that shaft. So, get that fork back out of there. Isn't that easy? And then again, you put the vegetable oil in after it fills and that'll lubricate that shaft a little bit and you'll be fine. I think the trick is just to make sure that this doesn't get dried out. It usually takes about maybe three weeks for that to evaporate. You know, you're away on vacation or something. So if you get that symptom where it fills, but then it won't go to circulation, you get that intake drain light error, then you just gotta do this little fork trick. Mila also sells a tool that's basically the same thing. It's just like a fork, but uh, it's expensive. It takes a while. You can just use a fork from home. So we're gonna go and put this back together. We'll put the triple filter back in. Make sure that it's locked. That's important, you know, once you put these in, make sure that when you lock it, it won't lift up because if it lifts up, food debris can get in and it can clog your uh, spray arms. You can check those spray arms and make sure there's nothing caught in any of those holes. And then we'll put in the bottom one. Let's push it on in. And then same thing, just check it, make sure there's nothing caught in the spray arm. And then we'll go ahead and put in the lower basket. And that's just going to slide in. There we go. And we are all done. So thanks so much for watching our video. 
and hopefully you save a lot of money. You don't have to have the Mila repair people come out and, and do this for you. You can do it all yourself. So many more Mila um, dishwasher and washing machine and dryer videos available on our channel. I hope you would consider too joining our channel. You can just press the join button below. It's $4.99 and then uh, $4.99 and then you have me basically on call to give you technical help whenever you need to, to do your repairs. A lot of, a lot of people are um, appliance technicians work with me on a weekly basis where I can give them some guidance and you'll have access to uh, my text number, my email, and I can uh, talk with you right away. If you have a problem, I can send you manuals, I can send you diagrams, send you part links and information on how to fix these things. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance and also click the little bell notification button so we can send you uh, weekly videos on all the different ways of fixing appliances around your home and saving you lots of money. So thanks again for watching and please also press the like button for our video if this was